Okay, key number 13 is your diagonal connection. Your diagonal connection. What, what does that mean? <laughs> um, let's see. How can I show this? So in the middle, you've got your ego self, your human self, you know, you. Down here, you've got Gaia up here. You've got higher self. And we have, of course, our vertical connection between, you know, self, higher self, and your earth star chakra, basically, right? We all know about the vertical connection that, of course, keeps going up and up and up. And then we also all understand our, like, horizontal connections, right? That was supposed to be straight, but you get the idea, you know, to your peers, you know, soul family, the people that you connect with down here on the earth plane, but who really are vibrating on your same frequency. These people are on your same bandwidth. You immediately click, you know them, you, you're you on the same level, right? <laughs> there we go. That's what we typically think about. I, I feel like most of the time we're all kind of thinking about the vertical connection and the horizontal connection and also just, you know, your normal self connection. But what about all the other spaces? What about what's going on? What's going on in these other quadrants? How can we get more connections here? Because you might not connect in this way with all humans on earth, right? But we are desperately trying to come into a sense of unity and remember that we are one whole organism. So this is where the diagonal connection comes in. Somebody over here, some rando, some random person who's like vibrating over here, right? This is somebody, you know, just any random person you pick off the street, somebody who you can tell you is just, you don't have anything in common with. You feel like you don't have anything in common with these people, right? Um, so how do you connect with them? That's why it's this vertical connection. And this also extends up here, you know, maybe up here, maybe you have some ET that doesn't really resonate with you or, or an ET that feels really strange, right? Because if we think of this north, south, you know, higher, lower than down here, you have your earth people and up here you have your, your like 5D or ETs, your celestial people, your higher vibrational beings who are currently vibrating at a higher speed, right? So I think this is also in terms of your diagonal connection, this this also includes ETs um, or, or non-physical beings that you find that just feel kind of off. These can be the kind of ET beings that scare you. For a lot of people, this is probably the Zetas, right? The Zetas or the Greys or the Mantis beings. Um, when you are challenged to connect with, you know, beings on some level that, that feel slightly off and they might originally scare you. So that's going on up here too down here of course you know it's also going the other way as well <laughs> we have some other on some other examples could fit into this category here um but i want to mostly talk about random people down here all of our human randos because this is the biggest struggle for me maybe for you for some of you guys maybe you connect really easily with all different types of humans all of them maybe you don't really feel that lack of resonance um so for you guys maybe it's this is going to resonate more as making your diagonal connection to ETs or to non-physical beings that you find off-putting or unusual or just hard to imagine why they would be good for you to connect with, right? They, they might alarm you or creep you out in some type of fashion. So whatever way this goes for you, it, the point is that this is a whole growth process. And by the way, connecting with one helps you connect with the other. Um, for me, it's been easier for me to connect with you know, spider beings and Zetas and all of these strange, strange creatures, strange beings, it's easier for me to connect with them than it is for me to connect with a normal human. I, I have like, in, in, in this life, I have like deeply, deeply, deeply struggled with like social paranoia, okay? Like <laughs> on a really extreme level. So for me to connect with a normal human, like terrifies me deep down to my bones. I mean, not so much anymore because I've spent my life kind of trying to work through this, right? But, <laughs> but I, 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 uh, for me, this is where the emphasis is for this moment. Um, so how? How do you how do you make this connection? 
and I, I feel like we are really, really, really being invited. It is, is so important to make, to make these connections because in doing so, we literally connect more pieces of the whole. We literally come into our sphere. We are creating the sphere. We are creating more, more connection. And we are remembering that we are all of one heart. And this all clicked into place for me when I was at that Halloween party a couple days ago of all things. I can't even believe it. It was like at that party, it was just a completely a normal, normal party. I didn't know anybody there. Um, but I went because the universe clearly wanted me to go. That was the only reason I went. I didn't want to go. Um, but, and I felt like there was some energy work that I could assist with there. So I went and sure enough, um, in the middle of the party, I, I felt this, column of light come down and hit me and I was like the bell or the tuning fork and then this these pulses went out through the whole house and I was just standing there um like in the corner in the kitchen like feel, feeling this happen and I was like wow this is insane this is like clearing out this house this is giving all of these people in this house um like healing and activation and protection and uh, and everything it was just all of this energy coming down and and um it was interesting because I could tell I could look around the room and see how every single human in the whole house uh, was part was part of it. It wasn't just that like, oh, I was there and I was able to, and I channeled the energy. No, it was like every single person in the entire house, every single person at that party had a role to play in bringing this, bringing this about. Everybody had their own unique, perfect function. And, but if, if anybody hadn't showed up and there, there were all kinds of people there, right? Doing all kinds of whatever, right? There were people who were awkward. There were people who were way too drunk. There were people doing who, who knows what, right? It was, it was just like a normal, normal Halloween thing. And everybody was being whatever they were. It, it was, there was nothing like particularly interesting about the human dynamics. It was very, very normal. And that is actually the point here. This is the point. If everybody shows up and is exactly as they are, and then, then that is when these massive energetic, <laughs> pulse moments can can come down and and shift out but it takes us <laughs> uh the people who are abstract if you're watching this you are clearly an abstract consciousness right and you might be able to distinguish yourself between the people who are the normal humans or as i'm coming to understand them they are the, they are the the beings on earth who have managed to become so beautifully grounded, right? So grounded. You know, I know star seeds walk around. We talk about how we're grounding and grounding, but we, I honestly, guys, I don't know if we even understand the real meaning of the word grounded, right? It's the, the normal humans, the normal people who are so, so, so beautifully grounded into their everyday life, into the minutia of their everyday life, right? We need to connect with them. They need to connect with us. This, this, like, at, at that at that house party, I literally felt this like this. That's why I keep saying diagonal because I sense energy like that through my body. Um, I can I can like feel if it's like a horizontal or a or a vertical or a horizontal. In this case, it was this like diagonal click. It was me synchronizing with all of these people that I didn't have anything in common with and that I would normally never like hang out with because I just have nothing in common with them. But I found common ground with them. It was so important that I found common ground. And I went into that, I walked into that house going, okay, I'm just going to roll with however, however this is going down. Like I, I didn't, I had no idea who was going to be there or who, what they were like or what they were going to be doing. So I just had just set an intention to kind of roll with it and basically fit in. I was just going to do what they were doing. And it was because I set that intention. And, and by the way, like that, I walked in and I had to do a bunch of jello shots. That was the first thing I had to do when I got in there. And I was just like, okay, whatever, if this is what it takes, I'm going to just do a bunch of jello shots. Fine. This is how I'm like finding common ground, right? Finding common ground. And, um, that allowed this vertical, this, this diagonal, this diagonal connection to click into place, click into place. And it's even more than that. So from my, my, my egoic self, my human self to these random people at this party, it made this diagonal connection, right? But you got to think that this was also a connection between my higher self, you know, all of my higher consciousness was getting involved here, making this very interesting angle. What is that? What is that? Right? <laughs> um, it's interesting. If you, any of you who are into astrology, you know this. This is the thing. This angle here, it's the quincunx, or also called the inconjunct, inconjunct angle. And it talks about when 
two signs that basically have nothing to do with each other and don't have any other kind of connection when there that that's that's what the angle is about it's literally about kind of making a connection between things that aren't connected um this would be two signs that you know they're not they, they don't they don't share an element like it's not two earth signs right and it's not two cardinal signs it's like two signs that have nothing to do with each other like i think like Capricorn and Gemini would be in conjunct. Don't quote me on that. I'm trying to imagine it off the top of my head, but it's something like that. Two two signs, two astrological signs that basically have nothing to do with each other. It's the quincunx or the in conjunct angle. And that that is what happens when you find common ground with people you have nothing in common with. And that is also, and when you look at it this way from this like round circular perspective, you start to understand that this isn't about levels, right? This isn't about hierarchy. There is no hierarchy. There is only, there are only zones. There are zones in a circle, zones on a sphere. I think sometimes we fall into this habit and I've been guilty of this too, especially when I first had my starseed awakening, I woke up and I was like, oh my God, like, it, cause it, 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 it helped me understand why I always felt so different. Right. And then it's kind of easy to think, okay, okay, well, there's, those of us who came down from higher dimensions, right, then we're more high vibrational. I mean, it, you know, we use these words, these human words, just because we don't have any better language, and that's fine. I don't think we need to make a big deal out of it. I don't think we need to start, like, editing our language all the time. I think it's just, you know, it's fine. Let's just communicate the best we can and, like, get on with it, right? Um, but it, it is worth, like, noting sometimes about how it, there is no higher and lower. We, we could maybe better to say more abstract and more grounded, right? More abstract and more diffuse and more dense and more focused. Um, but to remember that it's not on a line, it's not actually linear, linear, it's only seeming linear and really it's a sphere. Really everything is a sphere or a circle or whatever like a 12 dimensional sphere would be, I don't even know, right? But it's all all connected, all part of one whole. There are no levels, there is no hierarchy, There, there there's only zones and connections and you know, I mean, just imagine then we would get this, if we connect this to here, to whoever's over here, and then we can keep, we can keep going. If we connect Gaia up here, up like this, you can see how sacred geometry starts playing out here, right? Now we get these squares going on. And isn't this cool? Those of you who are into astrology, you can see this almost could look like a Man, and then you could even get going all across like this, right? You can keep going with this. This is making this is this is sacred geometry. This is this is when you look at, at sacred geometry, when you look at the different types of like Metatron's cube, for example, this is what all those lines mean. This is there's these nodes, right? There are nodes everywhere, and nodes are us. We are consciousness, we make up the nodes, especially when you are a node in a human body. You are a very, very defined, very specific, very concentrated node. And then we all connect. And every single human on the planet, we are going around making and shifting these connections all the time with all of these different angles and all these different points. <sighs> I just happened to look at the clock uh, of, of the, the video and it was exactly 13 minutes when I, when I said that. So, and, okay, now, now my dog. Okay, <laughs> I was going to keep rambling, but I'm going to take that 13 and the fact that my dog also thinks the video is over as a sign that you guys get it, that... That's all I need to say, and that's it. So, I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>